Hi, Valeria. Hi, everyone. Yeah. Thank you for coming again. Uh, yeah. Thank you. You are a professional model, and uh, I think you are very popular <laughs> among guys. No, <laughs> no, not really. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, kind of. Do you have a boyfriend? Yes, I have. Yeah, actually, I saw a picture on your uh -huh. Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> How did you meet your boyfriend? When I came to work in Thailand, my agency sent me to work in university. Every year in Thailand, art faculty, they have a design competition. There is a kids who learn how to like make a fashion design of clothes or accessories. And in the end of the year, they have a graduation show. I think similar must have in Japan. So my boyfriend, he was a uh, study in art faculty, but not fashion design. He is a sculptor, like his major is sculpture. But in Thailand, there is a system of um, seniority, like when the older kids, they help the younger one. And so he was a senior from art faculty and he helped the young kids. I worked with the young graduators. They were a little bit like scared of me, don't know why. <laughs> they were shy to talk and uh, avoiding uh, contact with me. So I found him because he was older and then I communicate and ask everything about work through him. So that's how we met, because like I need to communicate with somebody and I found the person who can understand me in English. And um, that's how we like start to talk and just be friends. I was first time in Thailand and um, he just asked me to go to hang out with his friends and we just talk about like a common things uh, before start to date. So just met at work. Is he Thai? Yes, he's a Thai, fully Thai. Oh, okay. Where do you hang out with him usually? We're going out with our friends. It's uh, normal pubs or restaurant, art galleries, market, shopping places like this, like where everyone else going. It's not a special place. Or we just um, going to some events, for example, uh, music festivals or stage plays. Just the common places, if you have, for example, a new exhibition open up or music festival coming, famous artist or some um, TED talk or events about fashion, we're going there with our friends. Mm. I only dated with Ukrainian people, so like it's the, my own like culture. And then I <laughs> date with Thai. So I don't have so much experience, but I have many friends who is also models because we are traveling around the world, then many of them dating foreigners. It's not only like Asian, it can be American or French. Those people are different from us, even we look same, but uh, the culture is very different. So I can say that they are foreigners as well. Do you have any preference? My preference is only the same thoughts about life. Also, uh, education similar like me. For example, I graduated from art history, so I'm very interested in cultural life. I like to go to the music concert. I like to go to theater. So for me, it's important that the person would be also at least interested in this. I don't expect that um, my partner will be like number one uh, person who knows everything about art, but I need someone who can share my hobbies, my interests, who have similar um, lifestyle with me, sharing the common sense same as i do so this is the only preference that i have i need like a someone who can understand what um, i'm thinking the way i live uh, and have similar interests with me so we can spend time together and be on the same page like this because uh, you know, I'm working and when I'm off from work, I want uh, the person to have a good time, to like um, have fun, to talk to. So we need to have similar 
interests uh, together to share something. You see more inside. Yes, because like I take care of myself. He also take care of me. But when I'm alone, I can do everything by myself. Like I can cook, I can clean, I can work. So I need somebody to, um, you know, to enjoy my time together. And this is my preference. And we have a very good match because he studies culture, I study art history. So, like, we understand uh, each other's hobbies and interests. And for us, it's easy to, to communicate. Do you drink alcohol? Uh, yes, sometimes I drink, but uh, not as much as I was young. When I was younger, like, a, in university, I used to drink like a horse and <laughs> I used to party like crazy. <laughs> Sometimes I remember I was party that hard that I was so drunk that police officer drive me back home. And like I was sitting in the police car uh, that have like an um, iron box inside and you cannot open the door from the inside because when like police capture someone who broke the law they put them in the like iron box so they cannot escape and i was like a drunk in this box and driving by police officer something like this but <laughs> but when i grow older like i start to feel um, pain in my body when i get really drunk the next day i have a headache or i have like a problems with the blood circulation something like this so i lower the the percentage of alcohol <laughs> and now i drink like a little bit and not often oh, okay. i think many people are like me when you are in university you don't feel any problems after you got really drunk but when you grow in like your body become more weak <laughs> And now you, I cannot bear that much alcohol. <laughs> yeah, and uh, this is orange juice. <laughs> yes, yeah. is no alcohol. Yeah, healthy life. <laughs> I turned to to healthy life just because like I got older. <laughs> <laughs> but you look young. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, very young. So I think if your university age or similar is okay, you can do whatever. What is your favorite alcohol? I like um, gin tonic is the best because I like um, a little bit sour taste and that it's easy to drink. You don't feel that much like uh, alcohol in it because it's mixed with tonic and lime and like mint. Also, I like um, Aperol. Yeah, Aperol Spritz because it tastes like orange also cannot uh, taste so much alcohol and it's like refreshing also i like uh, champagne so mostly it's a light alcohol that you cannot really feel like tired from the heavy taste but when i was young i was drinking like whatever i drank like a vodka tequila whiskey <laughs> basically anything like i didn't care about taste i didn't um, check like what is the good alcohol or whatever i just drink what like anything that was on the table i could even mix like a vodka with beer <laughs> but since like i got like a lot of experience and i grow so now i prefer more lighter versions <laughs> that is not that heavy and not make you forget everything what happened before you start drinking. <laughs> yeah. Some people have a stereotype, mm -hmm, like yes. uh, Ukrainian people, like vodka. Yes, yes. Actually, when you're in Ukraine, especially in the winter, we have like around one meter of snow. It's really cold. The wind, like no matter what you wear, like even if it's the warmest cloth, the winter just like stab you with the thousand, you know, needles all over your body is really cold. So if you drink a little bit vodka or cognac, like maybe 50 milligrams, it makes you feel very warm inside. Like you don't need to get drunk like as a peak, you know, you just drink a little bit and you feel warm. Your cheeks become like red and you feel like really good and energetic so i think it's related with the climate 
in Ukraine or Eastern Europe, like Poland or Russia, which have a same climate zone. And when I was in Ukraine with my boyfriend, who is Thai, he even drink a little bit of uh, cognac to feel like warmer because like you cannot imagine how cold it is when you go in the street you literally cannot talk because the lower jaw got freeze so you cannot really talk all your body like ready to collapse any minute because it's really freezing there and that's why uh, a lot of ukrainian women they like to wear fur which is very expensive they like like a fur from fox, like a coat from for fox or other like animals. A lot of people say like, oh, it's not sustainable, it's cruel to animals. Yes, it is, but people like it and want to have it because they feel warm <laughs> in winter. There is no coat that can imitate the real fur because I tried many. I tried North Face and Uniqlo, all the brands. And like you cannot bear it in countries like Eastern Europe. <laughs> it's a stereotype, but it's true. Like a lot of people drink uh, for getting warmer, but also a lot of people drink a lot and then they like act crazy and uh, you can see a lot of videos in about like our country how people get drunk, uh, especially the, it's very funny when people get really drunk on wedding and then like it's a wedding, everyone like should be look good, but guests, they start to drink since early morning. <laughs> early morning. Yes, and, and they get really drunk by the middle of the day. So when they drunk, they become like a little bit aggressive and... <laughs> When they become aggressive, Ukrainians, they not uh, avoiding conflict. If someone like wants to have a fight with you, usually we respond and then all the guests start to fight. <laughs> and, and sometimes they even like beat each other to the blood on the weddings. <laughs> Something like this. It's, it's a real story. So that's, that's how like a stereotype um, I, it's true, actually. Oh. <laughs> it's normal. I, I've been to many weddings where all the guests fight. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your stories. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting. Thank you, too. <laughs> yeah, and uh, you are doing Instagram. Yes. And uh, you post lots of nice pictures. Uh, yes, if you wish to follow me, my Instagram is Dear Valerie. All right. Thank you for your time. Thank you, too. Bye-bye. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you.